recording. <clears throat> hey everyone, just wanted to come on here and uh, talk about uh, the father of the church system today, uh, which would be called, in a practical term, religion, the religious church system setup. to do is uh, that father of church system setup is none other than through the reading of the New Testament Acts is Paul of Tarsus who had labeled himself an apostle also labeled himself um, the apostle to the Jew or to the Gentiles, um, and neither of those are affirmed biblically by other passages and understanding of the gospel, and more so. Jesus Christ. So, <clears throat> let's talk about some instances where if you're a Christian, you're a follower of Christ. Most, if not all, church religion that call themselves Christians are in fact not Christians. They are Paulinians. They are servants of of Paul, of the system that he has set up through the writings of, by, or for him in the New Testament. Again, trying to set the stage here is the fact that Paul, and if I call him Apostle Paul, um, it doesn't mean that I believe he was ever Apostle. Uh, to me, searching the scriptures, he is no greater in the kingdom with a special purpose than you and I. Um, and that, I believe, is bore out through the scriptures when you take into fact and consideration that he inserts himself, or the writer inserts him, not approved by the apostles, uh, by any genuine fashion that I could see. Um, and the apostles are not the approvers, by the way. Jesus Christ is. And although J Paul assigns himself as an apostle to the Gentiles, there was only one that Jesus assigned for salvation message, and that was Peter. And it was not only to the Jews, but also to the Gentiles, as you'll see in Acts 10, when he reveals this to the Italian band. And if you've done your reading, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you should go read chapter 10, when finally the message from the apostles, although this message was delivered to the Gentiles before he died, <clears throat> Jesus that is, uh, to the woman at the well, the Samaria. And so he is the one, Jesus Christ is the one who delivered the message to the Gentiles. He said, I must needs go through Samaria to meet the woman at the well. And Jesus gave her the insight, uh, I believe by scripture, that before it was even fully known to the Jews, Jesus explained it to her. He also explained it, I'll just say cryptically, even though it wasn't cryptically, if you know what we know now as far as spirit versus law, the letter killeth, the spirit giveth life. We understand what Jesus meant now. 
they may not have during the moments when Jesus was laying this out. So that's why I say that it went to the Gentiles, to the Sumerian woman, in full context of understanding prior to what the Jews understood because they were looking for the Messiah to come and bring them um, a new king to set this world in order and they being his chosen people so that they would be the leaders of the world in that fact. So, back to talking about the Paulinians, the church system, the religion of the world has been set up and brought back the ordinances of the old law. And the old law, Jesus came to get rid of. And I know some of you are going to be, oh no, he came to fulfill. What he came to fulfill, what Jesus came to fulfill was those writings that were true, that was written about him, that his coming would come, and things were changing, were going to change. Jesus didn't say that it was this time that he was coming back to set up his earthly kingdom. So when we look at that, they missed the boat. Even after Jesus died, rose again, and sent the Holy Ghost back, it was one by the name of Paul that was able to bring back that pharisaical law back into what Jesus came to change. Brought man back under the burden of man through a church religious system that had hierarchy, that had bosses, that had levels of closeness with God the same way that Jesus condemned the scribes and Pharisees of doing putting heavy burdens on men's shoulders, yokes about their neck. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. So when you look at that, you're seeing quite the contrast. You're seeing a very strong change from the Mosaic law. Jesus said, the letter killeth, but my spirit giveth life. Jesus told the Pharisees that, ah, you do this, you do that, but you leave out the weightier matters, which is love and grace and, and, and putting God first and your brother second. The first two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So when you look at that, Jesus changed it. And some of you are going to say, well, he came to fulfill he came to fulfill the prophecies that were written of him, not to come back and, and strengthen the Mosaic law. The law is done away with. It doesn't take much, but uh, Hebrews 10 and, and, and reading through Hebrews and, and, and understanding the purpose of Jesus Christ through the Gospels, that you will find that Jesus came to upset the money changers tables. He came to move that away because in that, no one could be forgiven. It was the blood of goats and bullocks that was not pure enough, was not good enough, but only to push the sins back. The Hebrews 11, the 39, I believe, 40, somewhere in there, where at the end of that chapter, it says that these only could be made perfect by us. Us during that time was the fulfillment of Christ in you, the hope of glory, the Holy Ghost coming and helping you in your life to lead and guide you into truth and righteousness and to be a follower of Jesus, not of Moses, not of Paul, not of Peter, Andrew, Bartholomew or anyone else, but only to Jesus. You answer to one and that is Jesus Christ, 
not to any subservience of Jesus. There was no hierarchical structure given by Jesus. Matter of fact, it came up three writings, three different writings. And again, you'll find that in Matthew 20, 25, 26. You'll find it in, in, in Mark. Uh, uh, 10, 43 through 45. You'll also find it in Luke 22, 25, 26. Where these subject, this subject was addressed of who would be over who and how that um, two brothers could be on one side and the other side of Jesus in heaven and, and at the throne. And, and you see that Jesus shot that down and said, compared that your bosses are rulers over you. They're masters, they're taskmasters. They tell you what to do and you do it. He said, this does not happen in the kingdom. It's not going to be for us. Those things will not be, he said. So there you go. There, there goes your church system hierarchy shot to you know what. No good. Jesus pushed that aside. No longer is there a Moses and an Aaron and, and, and all these, these offices that are going to be with others subservient to each other or to others. There's going to be no hierarchy. And when you can swallow that properly, then you can start to realize how all these other things, the um, My phone went off. I want to make sure we're still video. So that, that's one of the problems today, is that people are not following Jesus Christ. People are following Paul, the system church set up. And to their own detriment, they stand in the way so others cannot go in. Go into what? A church house? No. But that is predominantly... If you call yourself a Christian today and you tell people, hey, I'm a Christian, I love Jesus, first thing they ask you is, what church you go to? All wrong. All wrong. We have been force-fed these lies, though written in what we call the Bible or not, the truth is by the Spirit, and it will bear out what Jesus said versus what Paul or anyone else says. And if you're going to take Paul's side of it, you better hope Paul's got a good kingdom for you because Jesus didn't mention Paul's kingdom. And I'm pretty sure Jesus said only me. I am the truth, the way, and the life. So when you look at all that stuff there, you're looking at people that are following man. Once again, when Jesus said, you didn't have to. Jesus turned it all around. No longer. That's why we can come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may be accepted in the time of need. Who is the author and the finisher of your faith? Jesus Christ. So just wanted uh, to, to get a little scripture reading here in play. And kind of where we're going to start from. And we're going to see the contrast of Paul and Jesus, who are literally pitted against each other in the writings of the New Testament. Now, this is where many of you have swallowed that big old cam camel that can't get through an eye of a needle, but you strain at the gnat. You have fully adopted everything that Paul has said. You've fully adopted all the things that are critically against what Jesus said. To have you a church, to have you a man-built, man-made 
church that you say is of God. No man cometh to the Father but through by me, Jesus said. If you think you have God, the Father, and you don't go through Jesus, you're on the outside looking in. And I've asked Trenton to read the scripture here. Alright, go ahead. Read loud. For I am <clears throat> for I am already being poured out as a drink, offering and time of my departure is at hand. Okay, what are we reading here? This is Second Timothy. Go ahead, tell him. Second Timothy four verses six through seventeen. And what we're doing here, we're establishing what Paul is telling Timothy, who is his disciple according to the story. So here we go. Go ahead and read. I have fought the good fight. All right. I have finished the All right. race. All right. So what I want you to know here, what I want you to start detecting is the fact that Paul is talking about himself. Paul is not lifting up Jesus. The Bible said the Holy Ghost, Jesus said the Holy Ghost, when he has come, will testify or speak of me. But you will find there's a whole lot of I, 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 through the scripture here of Paul. Again, pitting himself equal to, parallel with Jesus Christ. And as I said earlier, Paul went before the council. He convinced these people of his conversion. And we talked about his conversion last week, how Jesus, according to Paul's story, took away his sight. And we've never heard until then that Jesus took anyone's sight, but always restored their sight. Jesus never harmed people, even the demons that he sent to the swine. The money changers tables that were turned over. No one got a black eye. No one went to the doctor. Nobody went to the hospital. None of that was recorded for us. So we cannot say that it happened. So Jesus caused no one harm. But Paul says he got harmed by Jesus. He was struck down on his road to Damascus and struck with blindness. And not too far later, Paul struck another man with blindness. And if you don't see this going off of the rails of who Jesus is, you've got your head under a rock. Continue reading, please. I have kept Louder, faith. please. I've got two recordings going on. Okay. I have kept the faith, finally. There is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to who have loved his appearing. Verse 9. Be diligent to come to me quickly, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world and has departed for Thessalonica. Thessalon Thessalonica. So what we've got here is we've got Paul boo-hooing and putting everything to himself. Where's Jesus at in all this? No, they've forsaken him, not Jesus. Who was forsaken here? Oh, Paul was forsaken. And he's coming to the last days of his journey, he's telling, he's giving his boo-hoo story of how he's done so much to bring people to Christ and all these things, but yet he's taken all this credit, just like man, moving all this here. She's saying I got something. Oh, hanging off. All right, so we got a strap hanging off the back of the truck. So 
we'll check this one out. Jump out, put that in there. All right. Pardon the noises here. And, uh, we're trying to get this on this trip here. That was hanging out the back. Some lady let me know. All right, so what we have here is the fact that Paul is boo hooing here about Demas leaving him, departing from the faith. What faith is he departing from? Paul's way of believing is exactly what he's departing from. And I'm not so sure Demas is all that wrong. And if you look at this, you read that portion of scripture, you're going to find the mimic exactly of what man does today in churches. If you don't agree with the UPCI standards, then you're a backslider. And this is exactly what Paul's saying about Demas. We don't know nothing about Demas. We can't judge for ourselves. We don't know what, what disagreement Demas had. Paul, the one that's not giving anything to Jesus here, um, I don't know what Demas, I'd love to hear Demas' side. Maybe Demas' side, and I'm just conjecturing here, so don't take any of this as truth. I'm not asking for you to. But, but we're, we're left with either wholeheartedly trusting that Paul was in line with Jesus, which we know that he's not because he's given himself glory and, and oh, he's been forsaken, not Jesus. Um, and we know that it's all about Jesus. Jesus told us it was. So here we are with, with not knowing what Demas disagreed with Paul on. It may have been, hey, dude, you're too full of yourself. And again, I, I'm just conjecturing here. I'm just throwing this out there. Um, I don't know. We're not left with anything to, to chew on with that. But looking at the situation here with Paul, looking at what is happening, um, how Paul is just lifting himself up, then what we can say is maybe Demas got tired of Paul talking about himself or going off of what Jesus really taught. Because obviously they've had conversations with the other apostles, with apostles, true apostles. Uh, we know that Peter, James was there. Uh, I'm not sure about John. I don't think John was really in this group. Um, just at my recollection at the moment, but the point is, is that they were around people, I would assume, I would assume Timothy uh, hopefully would have known Peter and, and those that they, he could have got some information about Jesus on that Paul speaks of. However, it's all about Paul. It's all about what Paul is feeling how he is being betrayed by this Demas who again with what I have read about Paul I can think of a lot of reasons why he would have departed from Paul because if Paul wasn't quoting the miracles and Jesus and he started going off on himself like these preachers do today they're Paulinians they woe is me and, and these pastors when they're out having dinner together or a breakfast or coffee they're out talking about the congregation of how oh woe is me and oh, I just can't get anywhere with these dumb headed folks and you know they just don't get it I don't get it they just keep doing this and that and, and they're just judging the, the holy be Jesus out of them but the problem is, is they don't want them to get any better because then they wouldn't have a job. You see how that works? If they're not preaching something that, that they think is, is making you 
feel like that you're not serving God, then you won't come back. Because what do you need to go hear their teaching for, right? Because they've got to be on you. You've, you've got to be listening to them. And, and, you know, that's just the way it is. That's right here in your Bible. No, no. But what's in there is not all, not all uh, appropriate to do. It, it, it gives us a very lightning uh, view of what Paul did and what he convinced others to do. But it doesn't make it right or jive with Jesus. That's the big problem. That is the problem with the church today. And I don't mean God's church. Because God's church is something way different than what they call church today. God's church is they that worship Him in spirit and in truth. And if you want to do a full depth of worship, that's obedience. You obey him if you love him you will obey him so let's let Trenton continue on so we can get through this scripture reading Demas has forsaken me having loved this present world and has departed for Thessalonica Crescens for Galatia Titus for Dalmatia. Only Luke is with him, is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. For Titus I have sent to Ephesus. Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Tros when you come, and the books, especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. You also must be aware of him, for he has greatly resisted our words. At my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May, may it not be charged against him. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Here we go, that likeness of Jesus thing again with Paul. And, and they, this dude that forsook him, that uh, went against him, hey, mark him, you know, don't, don't treat him good. Now again, a, a, a little bit of conjecture there, but it's, it's still the same thing as saying don't accept him because he's not going along with what I'm saying. Didn't say what the Lord was saying, but what I said. And if you read that properly, if you understand what is being had, what's going on here, then you, God will open your eyes. God will open up your eyes to see what is happening here. Of the taking away of what Jesus said to putting it on Paul. What Paul has to say. And Paul is not the subject here. So, anyhow, those things are flares. They are flashes in scripture to me. They show Paul assuming the parallel and usurping the authority of Jesus. So when you look at that, you're saying, Paul says, he forsook me. Well, who else was forsaken? Who else was, was said to be forsaken? Jesus. And so when you look at that, you say, hmm. And the parallel of, of Paul going to what he calls a martyrdom, martyrdom to, to Jesus. So when you look at that stuff, you're finding that he is paralleling 
himself okay. paralleling himself to Jesus and almost making himself out to be the number one of Jesus so we, we can't we can't just allow that to happen we must realize what is happening. And these folks that are following, following Paul need to wake up. And you need to reject those things. So, anyhow, I'm going to let Trenton continue to read. We're going to read uh, throughout 19, I believe. That's what I told him. Here it is. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me, and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Okay, so we have a deliverance here. We also have where he goes back and touches, touches the stone, touches the base, that the Lord brings the Lord back in it, that the Lord works working through him. So he's bringing back validity, validating himself again. So he's making making himself valid once again, saying the Lord working through him, and he's just, he'll, he'll hit that touchstone. And you'll find in those writings, that's exactly what's happening. And I've told you before, that people's not going to read that back in the day, unless there is already a very well-known character for sake of stories and writings um, so you have to you have to keep that character alive to promote your story because people are going to lose interest and this to me seems exactly what has been happening and I in no way and many of you know have heard me say it again and again that this is Paul's intention, but that's the way it's written. That's the way it has to be read. And if he had a chance, he said, "Bring, bring the parchments and the, the the writings with you." So obviously, there was some writings going on. There was some stories being told. There was some instruction to be had. So evidently, Paul was very keen to writings that were happening. Did those writings make it to us? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know if that was or they was manipulated and that's what we have today. I, I cannot tell you. That is not 100% important to me. Because what is 100% important to me is serving Jesus. What he said and giving him my love and glory and my 100% mind, soul, and strength. And if I'm doing that, then I am completing what he told me would bring me salvation. So, I'll let Trenton finish this out and we're going to end soon. heavenly kingdom to him. Be glory forever and ever. Amen. Was that the last one? You want me to read 19? Yeah. The great Greek Heiska and Aquila in the household of Onesphorus Erasus stayed in Corinth but Trophimus I have left in Miles stuck st st stick slick stick sick there you go okay so anyhow once again uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue in this um, series if you call it series whatever but we're we're gonna talk more about this 
but some of you need to listen to this. You, you, all of you need to listen to it. And but some of you and most of you are not going to listen to it because you think it's already uh, out of of the realm of, of truth or Bible. But this is where you're at. You are in a church system. If you want salvation, it's only going to come through Jesus. Not some pastor, not some priest, not some gathering together in some natural um, earthly building. If you want to serve God, you're going to have to serve and worship Him in spirit and in truth. And if you think by crossing, checking your name, by your giving and your, your um, attendance at a physical church building is going to get you there. I'm here to proclaim that you're on the wrong route. So, God bless you. Hopefully, um, things will open up for you in your mind and scripture, and you will see what is happening. Um, in Jesus' name, God bless.